Hi, folks. Welcome. This is Pastor Sherry Baldwin with Take It to the Streets TV. Now, I always want to remind you that it's not necessarily that we're going to be in the church all the time. So we have to be prepared to take our message out to the streets, out to the highways and byways of life. I want to share with you a little bit about the ship Alfaro. I don't know how many of you saw this internationally. It was on the news a little, not as much as what I thought that it should have been. But it did get some recognition. And the reason why I was so touched with the, the ship, the Alfaro, was because this ship sailed into one of the worst hurricanes that we had had in a thousand years. And when the Alfaro set out across the seas, this big, huge tanker, now keep in mind the tanker was 790 feet long. That's the same length as a football field, actually two and a half football fields. And the tanker was 40 years old. And so it was not up to par as far as their electronics uh, and all the different things that it takes to keep a tanker of this size afloat. And of course, when the Hurricane Joaquin came in, Alfaro, the captain, was under the, uh, uh, the justice, uh, not the justice, of uh, the orders, excuse me, folks, of the owner of the tanker. And he said to the captain, take the, the Alfaro and go, because it's going to be all right. It's not going to sink. And they thought that they could get ahead of the storm. But instead of getting ahead of the storm, they got in the storm. And the reason why I'm talking to you about the Alfaro is because I was so touched by this about how our life is, how we think that we're going to get ahead of the storm. But in a storm, you're either ahead of the storm, in the middle of the storm, or at the end of the storm. And that's kind of how life is. And these folks, they got in the middle of the storm. And the 22 people that worked aboard that ship and the four crew people were all they all died, they all drowned. And there was very few things that remained other than the one man, the one man that owned the Alfaro and what he has to feel every day to know that he was responsible for these people. And the reason why it's so sad is because his motive was greed. And I'm not to say that money is the root of all evil because I don't believe that. I'm saying the love of money is the root of all evil. And these people lost their life because of the greed of the owner of the Alfaro. And I was so touched by it because I kept wondering, did they know Christ? Were they prepared? You know, when you go on a sail like that or a ship like that, I mean, yeah, you pack your belongings with you. But you can take your belongings, but where's your heart? Where's your soul? Where's your salvation? And that's the question that I'm asking you tonight. You know, where is your heart? Where is your soul? And where is your salvation? Where are you putting your trust? These people put their trust in the owner of the Alfaro. I hope they were prepared. I hope that they had eternal life. I pray for the families of the people that were on that ship because they're the ones that lost their loved ones. But enough of the Alfaro, but I want you to think about it. Tonight as we have this program, I want you to think about where are you putting your trust? Thank you. Hi, Pastor. Hello, hello. welcome, welcome back, welcome. hello. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Well, we're this... here to be blessed by your amazing music. Well, you know, I, I come to realize as I hear the story of the uh, Alfaro that we, we do put our trust in things. You know, and, and so now, the, as you as the rightly say so, what do we put our trust in? Do we put our trust in the money? Do we put our trust in our own abilities? Do we put our trust in the people that we know, in the stock market? Where do we put our trust? Um, and I think in my own uh, life, I think I put my trust in my performance abilities when I, when I was a, uh, an, an atheist, as we talked about last time. And... Um, as the Lord brought me into his kingdom on a very special day, he changed my perception of what trust is and what love is. And so, and so um, you know, as you talk about this story, it reminded me of my own um, 
moment of trust. I was in Burkina Faso. Now, many of you don't know where Burkina Faso is. There's a, I think uh, I saw a globe right next to you. It's in Africa, it's in the west, Af uh, west coast of Africa, a little bit north of the country of Ghana. And I was there to um, film a um, documentary about AIDS and uh, children in AIDS. This was in the year 2000. And I had been um, participating in church nominally, was playing in church, but I was not a Christian. Uh, but I had read the Bible, I had started to, to read the Word, and the Word came and, and, and kind of conquered me. But I went to this journey uh, to Burkina Faso, and I was very, very deeply touched by the misery that I saw. Uh, these AIDS, it, it was in the beginning of AIDS, and there was no cure, and the children, they were just laying there, and the, 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 the men were using virgins to think that they could be cured and all kinds of very bad conceptions about it. Um, but I'm telling the story because I came back to my hotel room in Ouagadougou, which is the capital of Burkina Faso. And, and to make a very long story short, Jesus Christ appeared to me in, 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 in a light. And, um, and you know what he said to me? And it was appearance that was physical that I saw where I had, I was, I was pinned against the, the wall and, and with a, because there was a, a power that came out of this light. And Jesus said, you know what, Makinto? I am real. Mm. I am real. And I want you to trust me. And I wrote a song shortly after that I would like to sing for you, uh, Sherry, because that was a revelation to me. And from that moment, my life was changed. The reality of Jesus Christ being my love, he manifested himself to me in many, many ways, in many beautiful ways, in changing me from the inside out. And that's what Jesus is going to do with you. If you trust Jesus, Jesus comes and changes you from the inside out. And all these things that he has placed in you, he will manifest it. And the sin he will eliminate because he has paid for it. So I would like to sing the song for you that I wrote shortly after I was born again. Like the scent of a flower that I smell but can't see As the wind in the air moves the leaves of a tree like the voice of a friend that I hear from afar I can't see you, Jesus But sure I do feel More than anything else, Jesus You are real Like the scent of a flower That I smell but can't see as the wind in the air moves the leaves of a tree Like the voice of a friend that I hear from afar I can't see you, Jesus, but sure I do feel More than anything else, Jesus, you are real You are real, Jesus more than anything else, Jesus, you are real. You are real, Jesus, you are real. More than anything else, Jesus, you are real. You are Sing it again with me. You are real, Jesus. You are real. More than anything else, Jesus. You are real. One more time. You are real, 
Jesus, you are real more than anything else. Jesus, you are real. Hallelujah. You know what, McGinty, what it reminds me of is when I was first got saved 42 years ago. My sister and I were talking about this just the other day. And, you know, I mean, the sign of a new life in Christ is this, you know, jubilation, you know, that we're just going to have this instant jubilation in us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I remember as young Christians, you know, we were just coming out of this hippie thing. You know, 42 years ago, there was a big tent, you know, in Calvary Chapel. Chuck Smith was over there. And I don't know if Greg Glory had hit the scene or not yet, but we were all out there in the tent, and we had all of our hippie stuff on, and we were barefoot, and we were just out there just having a great time. I had my little sons with me. You know, they were like 11, 12, and 13. And the message that I remember so clearly was that Jesus said, you know, to cast your cares upon me because I care for you. And as a young mom raising these three sons, you know, without a husband, by myself, I had no government help, I was doing it on my own. And all of a sudden I just, you know, heard this message and I went, you mean there's somebody that wants to hear me? I mean, help me, excuse me, Lord. And it was like, I, my middle son stood up first and I stood up behind him. And then my other two sons were right behind me. So we actually all got saved Amen. at the same night, Amen. at the same place. And it was so amazing because that's the joy of the Lord. That's the jubilation, you know, that you're feeling when you felt the presence of God come into your life, just like as I felt the presence of God come into my life. And as young hippies, you know, we had to give Jesus a chance on the back of our car with a bumper sticker, you know, and everything was one way with Jesus. And Maranatha, Lord, come quickly, you know. And I didn't know that 42 years later, you know, that we're still saying Maranatha, but we know now, you know, that the time is short and the days are counted, you know, before the return of the Lord. And we're going to be talking about that more and more, you know, as the program's gone, because we're going to be here every Friday at 5 o'clock. Mm. So we're going to be able to share a lot of this long journey that I've had and this journey that you've had, of course, too, brother. But, uh, you know, that is just the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we can't get caught down, as I started out with El Faro, you know, we can't get caught down and heavy laden because Jesus said he has come to give us rest. He said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. And just like he cared for me 42 years ago. Well, how old were you when you got saved, brother? Um, this was in the year 2000, so I was 37. 37 years yeah. old. Okay, yeah, I was 37. And, and what you just said really is a, is a great reminder. I think that a lot of people, they think of religion as something really boring. They think mm -hmm. of something where you have to perform rituals, mm -hmm. where you have to bow uh, to a deity that is that is, is stern and is, is serene and wants to punish you. That is not our Christ. Yeah. That is not our Christ. Our Christ is a Christ, a God of joy. Yes. And we want you, and I just, I just heard you say that, and I want to say it to you as the listening audience, um, God, Jesus, is a Jesus, a God of joy. He is carrying your burden so that you can live a life of joy. And, and so um, the, the, our expression, when we play music, when we worship him, it is an expression of joy. It's an, ex an expression of exuberance. Mm -hmm. When we praise him, we are there. We can dance. We can sing. We can, we can, we can participate in the beautiful, beautiful plan that God has for us has for you, Sherry, has for me, has for you, the listening audience. You are there to experience the goodness of God. And he is not a dreadful God. He doesn't want to punish you. He wants to take you out of your sinful life and bring you to a place of beauty, a place of joy, a place of exuberance, a place of dancing. And you see, that is, that is the beauty of being in Christ Jesus. Right. And so, and so, Remember that. I, I loved what you just said with the joy, you see, because that is what Christianity is all about. Amen. And you know, when I went to Bible college, one of the things I was so happy to read this scripture, you know, where it says that there was liberty in Christ, and I'm like, 
thank God, because I have always had a hard time conforming to the world standards, you know. So I love the fact that there is liberty in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We'll sing another song for us, Pastor. We've got about 10 minutes got left. 10 so. minutes. Wow. See, see, I had, you know, I'm overflowing now with yes. songs now that we're in the space of just, just yeah. glorification. But you see, um, um, there's a song that I wrote. One of my favorite um, um, people in the Bible is Caleb. Okay. And Caleb was the one who came out of the promised land together with um, um, Moses. And he was one of the only ones standing when they went over to the promised land. But he said, his, his, his words were said, I am still as strong as I was when I was, came out of Egypt. Hallelujah. You see, we in our old age, you <laughs> yes. know, I'm not talking, even, I'm getting my AA yeah. PR card or whatever that is soon, you know. And it's like, wow, but... God has a purpose for us. Yes. It is never over until it's over. That's right. And and so I love that you're doing this show now. This is your first show, yeah. you know. And 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 so, and so this song I wrote the song based on the personality of Caleb who said, "Give me this mountain. I'm still as strong with 85 yeah. years as I was Hallelujah. when I left <laughs> uh, left Egypt." And so it's called, "Let us get up and take this land." Uh -oh. And Sherry, I might want to start marching around. Let us get up. Let <laughs> so. us get up and take this land because. God has given you a land Amen. and he's given, given us a land to conquer. Amen. And Jesus Christ goes as a banner right before us, conquering the land, and we go right behind him and occupy. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> overcome in Jesus Christ. There is nowhere on earth that you can actually get a book. I thought about this the other day. Where can you go to get a book that says that you can have a whole new life, you can live eternally, you have somebody that's going to help care for you, watch over you, help you take care of your family, help you... What book promises all that, brother? There is no book. I mean, you can read books on positive thinking and positive role models and you can read books on business. I'm a small business owner for 20 years, brother. 
and you can read about all this but you have to do the work where with Jesus Christ he works through us he says cast your cares upon me he says I am there with you I'm going to walk with you through that valley Sherry of cancer I want to walk through the valley with you when you lost your son I'm going to walk through the families of the Alfaro. I'm going to be there with them. I'm going to hold their hands while they go through their mourning and their grieving. As I know, it takes a long time, and you never get over it. So he is there with us forever and forever until the end of time. This is what Jesus Christ has to offer you. Eternal life, a new life salvation he is the bride of Christ he is the morning star he is everything to me and I want him to be everything to you I want you to have what I have and the best thing about it it's free it costs nothing but your free will you see because God is like this he won't go snatch your will he won't force you he says, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the kind of God that we have. That's the kind of God that you and I serve. It's so amazing. And folks, I just want to just share with you again about the sinner's prayer. Just say this, God, forgive me for my sins. Come into my life. Renew a right spirit within me. Come into my life, forgive me, and he will do that for you. He will give you eternal life, just like he did me, just like he did for my little boys. He pulled us up out of poverty. Poverty. God is good. God is good. And if you haven't raised three rambunctious boys, <laughs> I tell you, there's nothing like it. <laughs> but God is good. Brother, let's close with one last song. Folks, we love you. We love you. We're going to go out with this beautiful song, but we love you so much that we came here to impart into you the love of God in us, and we just want you to grab it and just take it tonight. We love you. Amazing grace Lost, so lost, but he. 
he found me and he found you he found us yeah oh. and if you need some peace just trust the lord just trust him and he will deliver you Of the Lord Jesus. And you know, brother, it's that grace, that grace that we sing this song about, the grace that shed abroad around the entire world. I remember in Bible class and I was thinking, you know, how can God be around the world? Because he's in the air we breathe. You know when you come into the world, you give that first breath <gasps> to get life. And from there, we're on the journey of life. And at the end of life, we give our last breath back to the Lord. So folks, thank you for coming on this amazing journey with us. Thank you so much. We love you. God bless you. And I can't wait to be here again with you, to see you. Even if I can't see you with my eyes, I know you're there. So we love you, Pastor Sherry, Pastor McKenzie. God bless you all so very much. God bless.